Got a loose cannon here. What's this guy supposed to be, the ultimate badass? Just how dangerous is it? He's a peculiar man. I might even say he has principles. Got some hard bark on him. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss. I'm Masculine Studies. I am a content creator. I study the abstract concept of the alpha male and masculinity. And this is the alpha male analysis. Welcome to the alpha male analysis. The alpha male analysis is a video series that studies and analyzes certain fictional characters that represent exceptional examples of masculinity. These characters are not necessarily good men. They are good at being men. They are good at the overall performance of what masculinity is. Human beings use stories to communicate, to communicate ideas like culture, and our culture is the collective story a people tell themselves about themselves. These stories are essential to human beings because they form part of our heritage, history, language, thinking, and ideas rooting them in a collectively shared narrative. We use these shared stories, these narratives, this culture, to teach men and boys what masculinity is. And we use the characters in these stories to teach men and boys what masculinity is. These characters, through their stories, and through the culture that gave birth to these stories, serve as some of the most powerful examples to men and boys on how they should act. The purpose of the alpha male analysis is to, one, identify, explain, analyze, and understand the overall patterns of masculinity of each fictional character analyzed in each video. Two, gain an overall better understanding of masculinity, what masculinity is, why it exists, how it works, and how masculinity interacts with the world. Three, Use that better understanding of masculinity and the knowledge thereof to create a better life for ourselves. I hope you enjoy, and this is the Alpha Male Analysis. Masculinity is not morality. Morality is not masculinity. I do not encourage, condone, promote, or in any way, shape, or form support the immoral, illegal, or violent actions of the fictional character analyzed in this video. For the purposes of this video essay, masculinity will be defined as the characteristics human beings have attributed to the male biological XY chromosome sex of human beings having attached penises when they come out of their mother's bodies and the characteristics attributed to the gender and gender expression in the sense as biological sex is the root, gender is the flower. For the purposes of this video essay, the alpha male will be defined as an abstract concept, specifically a performative social construct, used to describe a human being, usually a male, who has been elected by perceived reputation and social groupthink to perform the role of the social dominant, in exchange for the leadership required to achieve the mutually desired goals of the group. This video will have spoilers. In this video, we will be breaking down and analyzing the fictional character Anton Sugar, the primary antagonist from the 2007 Coen Brothers neo-western No Country for Old Men.
In this video analysis, we will only be looking at the character as portrayed in the film, and not the book or any other media. Y'all getting any rain up here, Wayne? What way would that be? I've seen you was from Dallas. What business is it of yours? Where I'm from? Friendo? My God, Wendell, it's just all out war. I can't think of any other word for it. Who are these people? Anton Chigurh is a self-employed, contract-only mercenary that fulfills multiple roles in the scope of his duties. Within the story of No Country for Old Men, Anton's primary source of employment is his contract with a high-level drug distributor to recover drugs and a satchel containing $2 million cash from a drug deal gone wrong in the desert of Terrell County, a county in the U.S. state of Texas. Anton is not necessarily employed to kill the people who took the money, but simply to recover the money. In No Country for Old Men, Anton performs two primary roles, a hitman and a private investigator. You know Anton Chigurh by sight, is that correct? Yes, yeah, sir, I know him every which way. Anton has no explicit backstory, Anton has no implied backstory. There is, however, an inferred backstory of Anton Chigurh. However, this is the backstory of Anton Chigurh as I have inferred it. This is conjecture and is only my opinion. Anton Chigurh is a U.S. Army Special Forces combat medic veteran who worked with retired Army Colonel Carson Wells in the Vietnam War. Were you in NAM? Yeah, I was in NAM. Oh. So was I. He shoots a desk clerk one day, walks right back in the next, and shoots a retired army colonel. Once the war had ended in 1975, Wells and Chigurh went into the private security business as partners, offering their services to the highest bidder, including contracting to American and Mexican illegal drug organizations. However, at some point before the events of No Country for Old Men, for whatever reason, the relationship between Wells and Chigurh had ended, and the last time Carson Wells saw Anton was November 28, 1979. When did you last see him? Uh, November 28th last year. Seem pretty sure of the date. Did I ask you to sit? No, sir, but you struck me as a man who wouldn't want to waste a chair. I remember dates, names, numbers. I saw him November the 28th. Anton self-identifies with no name. Anton acknowledges no name. The only name we have for Anton comes reputed from two second parties. The drug distributor that hired Anton... You know Anton Chigurh by sight, is that correct? And Carson Wells. His name's Chigurh. Sugar. Chigurh, Anton Chigurh. Anton self-identifies with no alias. Anton acknowledges no alias. The only alias that Anton has, again, comes from a second party, Llewellyn Moss, who calls him Sugar. If I was into cutting deals, why wouldn't I just deal with this guy, Sugar? Anton has no family. Anton has no friends. Anton does, however, have two business acquaintances, both of whom he kills. The two men out in the desert that Anton was working with and the drug distributor that hired Anton. Every person that works with Anton ends up being killed by him. Anton Chigurh is 37 years old, as Javier Bardem, the actor who played Anton Chigurh, was 37 years old at the timing of filming No Country for Old Men. Anton was born in either 1942 or 1943, as the events of No Country for Old Men take place in 1980. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And Anton Chigurh is 37 years old. 37 minus 1980 is 1943, but he might also have been born in 1942. From this, we can deduce that Anton's year of birth is either 1943 or 1942. Anton is 5 foot 11 inches tall. He weighs between 170 and 190 pounds. He is white with dark brown eyes and dark brown hair. Anton wears a navy blue denim jacket with a brown button-up shirt, navy blue polyester pants with maroon snakeskin cowboy boots, and a mop-top style haircut. I just walked in the door. What's the situation? 
Sheriff, he had some sort of thing on him, like a oxygen tank for emphysema or something, and a hose that run down his sleeve. You got me. Well, you can look at it when you get in. <laughs> yes, sir. I got it under control. Within the story of No Country for Old Men, Anton performs 56 counts of individual criminal acts, including murder, murder of a police officer, escaping custody, grand theft auto, stealing a police car, impersonating a police officer. Howdy. What's this about? Step out of that car, please, sir. Murder, Grand Theft Auto. Murder, murder, Grand Theft Auto. Destruction of property. Trespassing, destruction of property. Breaking and entering. Burglary, stealing mail. Possession of an NFA-controlled submachine gun. Possession of an NFA-controlled silencer. Unlawful discharge of a firearm. Unlawful discharge of a firearm from a moving vehicle. Animal cruelty. Attempted unlawful killing of an animal. Possession of an NFA-controlled silencer, destruction of property, trespassing, breaking and entering, murder, destruction of property, murder, murder, destruction of property, trespassing, attempted murder, breaking and entering, murder, assault with a deadly weapon, murder, destruction of property, destruction of property, theft, kidnapping, false imprisonment, murder, destruction of property, trespassing, murder, 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 grand theft auto, trespassing, trespassing a crime scene, breaking and entering, trespassing, murder, and grand theft auto. In total, Anton's crimes amount to 22 different types of crimes, including 14 counts of murder, 8 counts of destruction of property, 6 counts of trespassing, 5 counts of grand theft auto, 4 counts of breaking and entering, 1 count of escaping custody, 1 count of impersonating a police officer, 1 count of stealing a police car, 1 count of theft, 1 count of burglary, 1 count of murder of a police officer, 1 count of possession of an NFA controlled submachine gun, 2 counts of possession of an NFA controlled silencer, 1 count of unlawful discharge of a firearm, 1 count of unlawful discharge of a firearm from a moving vehicle, one count of animal cruelty, one count of attempted unlawful killing of an animal, one count of attempted murder, one count of assault with a deadly weapon, one count of kidnapping, one count of false imprisonment, and one count of trespassing a crime scene. Just how well do you know Shigur? What do you want to know? I just want to know your opinion of her in general. Just how dangerous is he? Human beings interact with each other in three fundamental ways. Cooperation, competition, or avoidance. They work with, work against, or work around each other. And we use reputation as the means in which we will decide how we will act toward each other. Reputation is the framework of beliefs that a person and or a group holds true about someone or something. That means reputation is by far the most effective strategy for gaining and maintaining power over the fabric of reality because it enables access to the power of human cooperation and all the derivative powers of human cooperation. Is this guy supposed to be the ultimate badass? No, I don't think that's how I'd describe him. Well, how would you describe him? Within the story of No Country for Old Men, Anton Chigurh is described as something I don't understand. If it ain't, it'll do till the mess gets here. Got a loose cannon here. Just how dangerous is he? Compared to what? The bubonic plague? He's bad enough you call me. Yeah, he's a psychopathic killer, but so what? There's plenty of them around. Is this guy supposed to be the ultimate badass? No, I don't think that's how I'd describe him. Well, how would you describe him? I guess I'd say he doesn't have a sense of humor. If I was into cutting deals, why wouldn't I just deal with this guy, Sugar? Oh, no. <laughs> you don't understand. You can't make a deal with him. Even if you gave him the money back, he'd still kill you just for inconveniencing him. He's a peculiar man. You might even say he has principles, principles that transcend money or drugs or anything like that. He's not like you. <laughs> yeah. He's not even like me. No, he don't talk as much as you. I give him points for that. Do you have any idea how crazy you are? 
You mean the nature of this conversation? I mean the nature of you. You want to drive out there? No, it's all I had to look for, and it sounded like these old boys died of natural causes. Well, how's that, Sheriff? Natural to the line of work they was in. None of that explains your man, though. Uh-uh. He's just a goddamn homicidal lunatic yet, Tom. I'm not sure he's a lunatic. Yeah, well, what would you call him? Well, sometimes I think he's pretty much a ghost. Oh, uh, he's real, all right. Oh, yeah? Yeah, all of that over at the Eagle Hotel? <laughs> just beyond everything. Yeah. Got some hard bark on him. That's a dead dog. Yes, it is. Where's the receiver? I've got it. These are some ripe petunias. Hold this, please. Want it? You getting anything on this? Not a bleep. Reputation has certain functions. It achieves the ways human beings act toward you. And human beings act toward each other in three primary ways. Cooperation, competition, and avoidance. For two primary reasons. Value or fear. Anton is valued, feared, cooperated with, competed against, and avoided. Anton is cooperated out of value by two drug managers out in the desert. They cooperate with him because Anton is valued by the organization that hired him. And as such, they hired him to perform a job, a task, a labor. They hired Anton because they want a specific manipulation on the fabric of reality and perceive Anton to be the best man capable of accomplishing that specific manipulation of reality. And in that way, they value and cooperate with him and give him access to material resources. Anton is also cooperated with out of fear by Carson Wells. Carson Wells knows how capable and dangerous Anton is, and he is afraid of him. It is out of this fear, this fear of death, comes Carson's cooperation with Anton. Carson offers material resources of $14,000 through an ATM and agrees to let Anton have the money in exchange for not killing him. Both of these resources Anton declines and Anton kills him. Anton is competed out of value by the police officer performing the arrest not as a means of enforcing the law, but as a means of justifying his wages. Anton is competed out of fear in several instances, with the police, with Mexican drug organizations, with his own co-workers and employers, with Llewellyn Moss, the man he is hunting, with random people who just get in his way. And finally, the last way human beings act toward each other is avoidance, primarily out of fear. And in the majority of No Country for Old Men, Llewellyn Moss is shown running from Anton in an attempt to avoid him to keep the money he has stolen. In conclusion, Anton's reputation provides and serves many functions. It provides him with material resources. It provides him with cooperation. But it also causes many people and groups to compete with him and try to kill him. And it causes the avoidance of Llewellyn Moss, the man he is hunting and has to chase. These are the functions of Anton's reputation. You got no cause to hurt me. No. But I gave my word. Gender has a function. Masculinity has a function. Gender and the roles of gender were created because human beings discovered that one biological sex was significantly better or worse at a form of labor depending on their biological sex. As such, masculinity develops certain functions, certain manipulations upon the fabric of reality. Success in masculinity means success in certain specific forms of labor. Hello, Carson. Let's go to your room. Anton shows clear dominance twice in No Country for Old Men. 
The first time being with the drug managers out in the desert, and the second time being when holding Carson Wells hostage. With the two drug managers, Anton has voluntary dominance. Want it? You got anything on this? Not a bleep. The drug managers voluntarily give submission to Anton in return for his leadership. With Carson Wells, Anton has coerced dominance. You can have the money, Anton. Dominance that only exists under threat of force. You got no cause to hurt me. No. But I gave my word. You gave your word? To your husband. That don't make sense. You gave your word to my husband to kill me? Your husband had the opportunity to save you. Instead, he used you to try to save himself. Anton is successful in both honor of the word and honor to self when he offers Llewellyn Moss a choice. Bring the money and turn himself into Anton and he will not kill Carla Moss. If he doesn't, he will hold Carla accountable. So this is what I'll offer. You bring me the money and I'll let her go. Otherwise, she's accountable. The same as you. That's the best deal you're gonna get. I won't tell you you can save yourself, because you can't. Llewellyn rejects the offer, and Anton follows through on his word to hold Carla accountable. Anton shows several valuable skill sets, such as combat medicine and escapology. Anton has, or has possessed, several valuable physical resources, such as a 1969 Ford Fairline, a 1990 Chevrolet Caprice police car, a 1976 Ford Granada sedan, a 1981 Dodge Ram Charger, a 1979 Dodge D-Series truck, and a 1984 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Anton comes into possession of significant monetary resources when finding and taking the $2 million cash that was stolen by Llewellyn Moss. Masculinity must have challenges. Every man must go through his hell to reach his heaven. Masculinity without challenges, pain, or sacrifice is not masculinity. It is manufactured masculinity. Masculinity must be learned and earned. It can't be one or the other. It must be both. You must both learn how to be a man and you must earn your masculinity. You must earn your masculinity through the one and only way masculinity is earned. Challenges and the physical, emotional pain of those challenges. Challenges and pain from those challenges are the first, last, and only way a male gains his masculinity. There is no other way. Masculinity can't be bought, rented, loaned, given, gifted, or traded. The only way to manhood is through challenges and pain. There is no other way through that fact of life. No way around it, over it, or under it. The only way to become a man is through it. Through the pain and challenges of life. Anton has several different challenges. Anton faces the challenge of risk when committing all of his illegal actions and acts of violence. Anton faces the challenge of danger. When committing acts of violence, he opens himself up to harm and injury to his physical body. Anton faces the challenge of pain when getting shot in his thigh. Anton faces the challenge of failure when failing to kill Llewellyn Moss.
masculinity must have transformation. A man must always be transforming. Always be transforming for the better. He must always be learning, be growing, and he must always be transforming. A man is never static. He never remains in one place. A man is either transforming for the better, or he is just dying one minute at a time. Anton transforms in two ways. Anton's body transforms when he is severely injured in a car accident, causing a compound fracture that might very well cause permanent disablement to his left arm. And Anton changes in circumstance when he becomes the sole owner of two million dollars, significantly increasing his monetary resources. Let me ask you something. If the rule you followed brought you to this, of what use was the rule? Masculinity is a psychology. Masculinity, at its core, is a pattern of certain beliefs and behaviors. These beliefs and behaviors serve to create and reinforce the masculine function and masculinity in general. Masculinity amounts to the choices that a man makes every day. Masculinity begins and ends at the psychology. The psychology is what makes a man a man. It is the foundation of which everything that is masculinity is based off of. The function is the flower, the psychology is the root. I didn't put nothing up. Yes, you're dead. You've been putting it up your whole life, you just didn't know it. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here. And it's either heads or tails. And you have to cycle it. Masculinity must have purpose. Men are beasts of burden. And purpose is the way a man derives value and meaning from his life and actions. Anton Chigurh has a purpose. His purpose or what he believes his purpose is to be, is to be the humanly agent of the abstract concept of fate. And that purpose is observed in several different scenes in the film. You need to call it. I can't call it for you. Well, it wouldn't be fair. Anton believes he is an agent of fate, but not fate itself. To Anton, the coin is the will of fate, and the victim must choose. If right, the victim lives. If wrong, the victim dies, as is the will of fate. Anton cannot choose it for them, as it wouldn't be fair. It must be the victim that is wrong, not Anton. And when the victim chooses wrong, that is fate marking them for death. Anton is simply carrying out the will of fate. I didn't put nothing up. Yes, you're dead. You've been putting it up your whole life. You just didn't know it. Every day you roll the dice of fate. Every day you risk it all, whether you know it or not. You know what date is on this coin? No. 1958. It's been traveling 22 years to get here. And now it's here. And it's either heads or tails. And you have to say call it. Anton, like the coin, has been traveling for however long. And now both he and the coin is here at this moment. And the choice can only be one or the other, live or die. I know where the satchel is. If you knew you would have it with you. If I find it from the riverbank, I know where it is. I know something better. What's that? I know what it's going to be. Where's that? It will be brought to me and placed at my feet. You don't know too certainly. In 20 minutes, it could be here. I do know to a certain day. Anton doesn't believe in free choice and only believes in fate and determinism. Why bother getting the money if Llewellyn is just going to bring it to him? Why bother putting in the effort when fate itself will bring the money to Anton's feet?
Yes. Nobody. Accounting. He gave the Mexicans a receiver. He feels, he felt that the more people looking. That's foolish. You pick the one right tool. Anton thinks of himself as the one right tool of fate. And that when you hire Anton, you hire fate itself. You hire the one right tool of fate to carry out the will of fate. Call it. The coin don't have no say. It's just you. Well, I got here the same way the coin did. Anton believes that he got here through fate. The same fate that has brought the coin. And like the coin, he has no choice. Like the coin, he is just a tool of fate. <laughs> Masculinity must have courage. Masculinity itself means being a man. And when you are a man, a real man, you are a threat, or at least a potential threat, to other men. And those other men will try and scare you out of your masculinity. If you don't have the courage to be a man, you will never be one, or you will never remain one. The first scene we see of Anton's courage is when he kicks in the door of the motel. Anton knows there's danger on the other side of the door. Anton knows that there are men with guns on the other side of the door. But Anton chooses to kick in the door by himself and take on three men by himself. The second scene we see of Anton's courage is when he blows the lock to Llewellyn's motel room. Anton knows that the man who stole the money is behind that door, and that man might be desperate and armed. Yet, despite the danger, Anton again blows the lock to the door and by himself engages in a fight. The third scene we see of Anton's courage is when Anton approaches the crashed truck, knowing an armed man might be inside, alive or dead. But he approaches anyway and narrowly escapes death by ambush. You know how this is going to turn out, don't you? Nope. I think you do. So this is what I'll offer. You bring me the money and I'll let her go. Otherwise, she's accountable. The same as you. Masculinity must have confidence. Masculinity is a course of action that needs to be decided upon and stuck with. And you cannot decide upon or stick with any course of action without inherently believing that that course of action is correct. Without first having faith and confidence in that course of action. And so, without confidence, masculinity does not exist. The only scene we see of Anton's confidence is when Anton speaks to Llewellyn over the phone. Even after Llewellyn shoots Anton in the leg, Anton is perfectly confident of how the situation is going to turn out. You need to talk to me. I don't need to talk to you. I think you do. Do you know where I'm going? Why would I care where you're going? I know where you are. You're in the hospital across the river, but that's not where I'm going. Do you know where I'm going? Yeah, I know where you're going. All right. You know she won't be there. It doesn't make any difference where she is. So what are you going up there for? You know how this is going to turn out, don't you? Nope. Anton is so confident, he offers Llewellyn a deal because he is just so confident he is going to kill Llewellyn. I think you do. So this is what I'll offer. You bring me the money and I'll let her go. Otherwise, she's accountable. The same as you. You should admit your situation. There will be more dignity in it. Masculinity must have honesty. Because masculinity is the pursuit, the finding, the knowing, the facing, and the embracing of truth, no matter how horrible that truth is. The first scene we see of Anton's honesty is when he is holding Carson Wells at gunpoint. You should admit your situation. There will be more dignity in it. The second scene we see of Anton's honesty is when he's speaking with Llewellyn Moss over the phone. I won't tell you you can save yourself, because you can't.
Improvisation is a tactical skill that supports masculinity. The first scene we see of Anton improvising is when Anton strangles the police officer with his handcuffs. The second scene we see is when he unscrews a vent with a penny. And the third scene is when Anton makes a sling out of a kid's shirt for his arm. You know part of that's mine, right? You still got your damn shirt. I not even what it was for. Well, maybe, but I'm still out of shirt. In conclusion, Anton serves as an example of masculinity for many reasons. He is valued, feared, dominant, honorable. He has, brings, and acquires value to himself and other people. He faces pain, danger, risk, and failure. He has a purpose, courage, confidence, honesty, and improvisation. Anton has a reputation, function, challenges, and psychology of a man and serves in many ways, some good, most bad, to illustrate what a man is.